the South. And we have with us to talk about professional wrestling in the South, Professor Robert Picard uh, from uh, Tennessee State University, who has given us some excellent information in reference to how he uh, became involved in such a topic. And so, Picard, let's see if we might be pick up at this particular point and to uh, sort of look at the historical development of the art uh, that we're talking about today. Right. And I think you've already indicated that it has been lowbrow and et cetera, but it, I think it has come to the level Absolutely. now of being able to, let's talk about it from that perspective. Absolutely. Um, professional or wrestling in general is the world's oldest sport. Every ancient society has a tradition of wrestling. Mm -hmm. Uh, ev everywhere in the world and um, the only sport that comes close is foot racing mm -hmm. and you think about it, wrestling is kind of a natural thing I mean probably everybody's been in some sort of wrestling match mm -hmm. even just a friendly little scuffle in their life mm -hmm. um, and of course we have lots of metaphors that deal with wrestling wrestling with your conscience mm -hmm. and so forth um, and so for as long as it's been done it's been done for money the ancient Greeks of course in the Olympics they wrestled for money and it was a very rough sport too they went out mm -hmm. and broke bones <laughs> that mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, to the end basically mm -hmm. they, they didn't have that many rules and you also had boxing which was about kind of a cousin of wrestling mm -hmm. and you had something at that time called pancration which mm -hmm. was uh, what we would today call mixed martial arts, mm -hmm. which was basically just an out-and-out -out brawl with no rules. Mm -hmm. um, and they, would, they were paid. They were professional athletes. Now, move up to something like the Roman games. The, mm -hmm. uh, and we think about the Roman games as being fights to death, and they really weren't. The fights between humans were not. Sometimes mm -hmm. there would be fights between humans and animals, mm -hmm. and <coughs> those were to the death. And you had fights that were... Um, uh, well, not fights, but public executions. Mm -hmm. They executed people in very horrifying forms mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, the, during the games. Mm -hmm. And then you would have the fights between humans, and those usually weren't to the death. You could just hold up your index finger and, mm -hmm. and it would be over. And these were professional people. Many were slaves, but even if they were freed, they would still fight. They'd fight two or three times a year, make a lot of money, have a lot of female admirers. Mm -hmm. And another thing, as old as the sport is, as wrestling or any of these other kind of similar sports are, women have always participated. Mm -hmm. um, the textbook we use at, uh, at TSU uh, talks about Spartan women training to be, uh, training for mm -hmm. childbirth, basically. They prepare for childbirth by playing sports, including wrestling. Um, and in fact, the textbook says, and this is an exact mm -hmm. quote from the, the textbook, uh, they wrestled in tunics that other Greek women were mm -hmm. found immodest. Um, <coughs> and so, w you know, female wrestling was thought as kind of for titillation, but so was really for male. It's a friend of mine described pro wrestling as a male soap opera, and I would add to that it's sort of kind of a female strip show because mm -hmm. women, by the fi 1950s, about 60% of the audience was women. Mm -hmm. Now. In our times, of course, it came over from England, from Europe, and going back to colonial times, there were taverns that would sponsor wrestling contests and, and you know, catch as can. They basically had all kinds of styles of wrestling. Um, eight of our presidents were wrestlers mm -hmm. at one time, and many of them for money. I'm not sure about Washington. Washington did wrestle. I'm not sure if he did for money, probably. Mm -hmm. But most prominently, Abraham Lincoln, our mm -hmm. most revered <coughs> president, uh, wrestled in over 300 matches, most of them for money. So mm -hmm. you might say it's, it's, it's accurate to say he's a professional, professional wrestler. wrestler. Mm -hmm. um, Who would have thought it, but right. go on, yes. During the Civil War, of course, uh, like in all wars, men are not always engaged in combat, so they're superior officers of organized uh, sports. Mm -hmm. One was the newest sport, baseball at the time, mm -hmm. but the one was the oldest sport, and the New England style kind of caught on mm -hmm. around the country. And after that, there would be pro wrestling contests. By the turn of the century, pro wrestling was a legitimate sport. Mm -hmm. uh, but it got a kind of dull because men would get each other in headlocks and they would have headlocks that go on for hours. <laughs> and people were just dull. They were bored by this. Mm -hmm. And at about the same time, you had these uh, carnival attraction shows called at shows. Mm -hmm. And they would feature these carnival hucksters would have wrestlers and They'd say things like, well, we got a wrestler here. He'll take on anybody in the audience. That guy would say, hey, I'll wrestle that guy, a local guy. And it turns out he's actually a wrestler. And they're working together to produce an exciting show. Mm -hmm. Now, at the turn of the, run to the teens, there were all kinds of um, what were called hippodroming scandals, which meant 
that the sports, all sports were rigged. Just about all, you had scandals, you had the great uh, say it ain't so, sh uh, say it ain't mm -hmm. so Joe, Joe scandal <laughs> Joe in 1919. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, horse races were rigged, uh, everything was rigged, boxing particularly. During the 1920s, you had Jack Dempsey had all these grudge matches, and wrestling got the grudge match mm -hmm. idea from boxing. Mm -hmm. um, wrestling just kind of stayed that way, and in the 1920s, these carnival show types, people like, uh, and people like Jack Pfeffer, who was an immigrant, Jewish immigrant from Poland, mm -hmm. came in and just turned it into a show. They were selling entertainment. And they would hire people who were not wrestlers, people uh, mm -hmm. like football players or guys who were just handsome. Mm -hmm. And of course, women's wrestling, there would be a women's match, just like there in ancient gladiatorial contests. Mm -hmm. There would usually be fights between senator, mm -hmm. uh, wives of senators mm -hmm. there. So, um, and you'd have midgets and all these other things coming. And two major things came along. One is the concept of heels versus baby faces. Mm -hmm. Baby faces were the heroes, the, the heels were the villains, mm -hmm. the bad guys. The heels versus baby, baby faces, baby or sometimes faces. they just call them the faces. Mm -hmm. And um, then the other was a tag team contest, initially called Australian Tag Team. Mm -hmm. Now, the, um, they would usually, the tag team contest, would have some outside interference, someone come in, hit somebody with a chair or whatever, and set up things mm -hmm. for a grudge match for the next week. Um, and everybody get a big show and they got their money's worth. Now, wrestling almost died out during World War II. Women kind of carried on wrestling then and then they died out. But then 1950s, we have this new kid on the block called television. Mm -hmm. And the networks want time, uh, but uh, regular sports, it was difficult to show on television at that time, uh, like baseball and so forth. So wrestling became big in boxing. Each network, there were four networks at the time, and all of them had two-hour wrestling shows and two-hour boxing shows. Mm -hmm. And they usually, the wrestling shows would always have a women's match. They were real popular. Um, 1957 or so, that died out, and it went to the local promotions. Promot promoters were divided with local mm -hmm. territories. Nick Goulas, who was a native of Birmingham, Alabama, grew up in the Greek section there, mm -hmm. um, became the promoter in Nashville. And he had Alabama, Kentucky, Tennessee, part of Indiana, very good. L let's uh, stop it here for our uh, final commercial break, okay. uh, Picard, and then we'll come back and uh, allow you to start at the professional aspect of it during the last part of uh, this show. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Okay.